Did Americans try to pull a coup in the Democratic Republic of Congo? So claims the army in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It points at the dark events that unfolded on Sunday in the capital, Kinshasa. Gunfire began in the early hours of the morning. We are talking as early as 4 a.m. Shots were heard near the Palais de la Nation. This is the official residence of the president. Felix Shisekidi is the man in office. He was re-elected for a second term in December. Reports say armed men attacked the palace. The French ambassador to the country reported automatic weapon fire in the area of the presidential palace. Videos started circulating on social media. Some showed men in military uniform brandishing flags of Zaire. There was another attack at the home of an MP named Vital Kamerhe. This is the man who is tipped to become the speaker. The Japanese ambassador to the Democratic, Democratic Republic of Congo, Michel Moto Mohima, said that two guards and an attacker were killed in the incident. A shell was then fired from Kinshasa. It went on to hit the city of Brazzaville in the Republic of Congo. Several people were injured. One of them had to be hospitalized. Things were escalating quickly. The spokesperson of the president's office said, and I'm quoting here, an attempted coup d'etat has been stopped by the defense and security forces. The defense and security forces are in full control of the situation. We'll come back to this in great detail with pictures to back it up. And what do we know about the operation? One. It was a well laid out plan with multiple targets. Apart from attacking and capturing the presidential palace, the plan as per the authorities of the country was to also attack the home of the new prime minister, Judith Suminva. The attackers were also looking to target the residence of the defense minister, Jean-Pierre Bemba. But this plan was not successful. And why is that? Because the attackers could not find the homes of these ministers. At least that's what the authorities are saying. Number two, the attempted coup was led by a man named Christian Malanga. He is of Congolese origin, but a naturalized American, meaning he has an American passport. We did some digging. Turns out this man has a rather interesting history. Malanga is a former politician. He was exiled. It was after that Malanga acquired American citizenship and authorities in Congo say that this man has been quote unquote definitely natural definitely neutralized in other words he has been killed reports say he was shot dead at the presidential palace we know that before his death Christian Malanga was broadcasting the attempted coup live on Facebook from inside the presidential palace in the footage one can hear Malanga say we the militants are tired we cannot drag on with Shisekiti. Malanga's son, who also is an American citizen, was part of the operation. He has been arrested. Felix, you out! Number three, authorities say there were several attackers of multiple nationalities. 40 have been killed, four have been arrested. Among them was a British citizen, also three American citizens. Like we told you, Malanga's son is one of the three American citizens. And what exactly has America said? Interestingly enough, the U.S. ambassador to the country has not denied or raised questions about the involvement of American citizens. Let me read out for you what the U.S. official has said. I am shocked by the events this morning and very worried by the reports of American citizens allegedly being involved. Rest assured that we are cooperating with authorities to the fullest extent possible as they investigate these criminal acts and hold accountable any American citizen involved. This is the part of the world where this is all happening. It's mostly a landlocked country. It's surrounded by the Republic of Congo, Central African Republic, South Sudan, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, Zambia, and Angola. 
Democratic Republic of Congo is rich in minerals, but the resources have not translated into progress for the 100 million odd people who live in this country. And why do you think that is? Conflict, corruption, poor governance. The country's natural resources mostly lie in the east, which also happens to be the part of the country where violence is raging. Clashes have intensified between the army and the rebel group that goes by the name March 23 movement or simply M23, which is believed to be backed by the government of Rwanda. In the past, Democratic Republic of Congo has fought multiple civil wars. The second Congo war was fought between 1998 and 2003. It left over 900,000 people dead. How have the people of Democratic Republic of Congo reacted to the news of the attempted coup? Some have expressed shock. Many are asking some serious questions. For example, how exactly did the attackers manage to enter the presidential palace, given that the property is heavily guarded? Authorities in the country have said that they will be getting back with more details. Over the weekend, news of violence in Kyrgyzstan was dominating headlines with attacks on buildings housing foreign students reported and triggering serious concern. What really happened? What led to the violence? Our next report getting you the details. A violent attack unfolded in Kyrgyzstan with hundreds of Kyrgyz men attacking buildings housing foreign students, including Pakistanis. These incidents of mob violence rocked the Kyrgyz capital on the night of May 17th. What led to the attacks? The police claimed that the attack was prompted by foreigners beating up locals in the city. Several Kyrgyz locals took to the streets on the night of May 17th, accusing officials of showing lenient treatment towards the foreigners involved in the fight. Following the violence in Kyrgyzstan, Pakistan flew back students on special commercial flights. On Saturday, Pakistan's foreign ministry said it had summoned and handed a note of protest to Kyrgyzstan's top diplomat in the country. According to a statement from Pakistan's foreign ministry, it was impressed on the Kyrgyz charge d'affaires that the Kyrgyz government should take all possible measures to ensure the safety and security of Pakistani students and citizens. On Sunday, the Embassy of India in Kyrgyzstan said that all Indian students are safe as the situation in Bishkek remains normal. This was the post put out on the platform X by the Indian Embassy, advising Indian nationals to contact the helpline number in case of any issue. It said, and I quote, The situation in Bishkek is normal. All Indian students are safe. They are requested to continue to follow the guidelines prescribed by authorities in the Kyrgyz Republic." Unquote. Earlier on May 18th, India advised its students in Bishkek to stay indoors following reports of mob violence targeting international students, especially those from South Asia. Meanwhile, Kyrgyz Republic's Ministry of Foreign Affairs has stressed that the situation in Bishkek is calm and fully under control and all necessary measures have been taken to ensure security and maintain peace and stability. Kyrgyzstan's affordable university fees has made the country a major academic destination for young people from South Asia, especially those pursuing medical studies. There are an estimated 15,000 Indian students in Kyrgyzstan. Time now for today's Gravitas Recall. The day is the 20th of May. It is the birthday of Blue Jeans. Yes, that's right. On the 20th of May, in the year 1873, businessman Levi Strauss and uh, Taylor Jacob Davis were given a patent to create work pants with metal rivets. The story began years ago. Levi Strauss was a San Francisco-based businessman. He was importing clothing and fabric and selling it to small stores in California and some other states. A tailor in Nevada named Jacob Davis was one of Strauss's clients. In 1872, Davis wrote a letter to Strauss telling him about the new work pants he was making. The pants had metal rivets on the stress points. Davis suffer, said that Strauss provide the funds and the two men get the patent together. Strauss agreed. 
On the 20th of May 1873, the patent was granted to the two for improvement in fastening pocket openings. And that is how the blue jeans were born.